G'day guys, we've got a calculus question today where it's given us a function and it says that we need to use the method of small increments to estimate the changes in y when x changes from 2 to 1.99 and from 2 to 2.01. Now to start with, with this problem, we need to understand what this method of small increments is. So basically, the method of small increments states that for small changes in x, so let's just write this down. So for small changes in x, we can say that the change, like delta y, over delta x can be approximated using the derivative of y with respect to x evaluated at our initial point. Now what that basically means is if to work out what the change in, for small change in x, to work out what the change in y is going to be from x equals 2 to 2.1, 2.01, we can figure out what the gradient is at 2 and just extrapolate it out to 2.01. So let's use this formula to solve this problem. So from here, we can also say that the change in y is, can be approximated, by, again, by the derivative of y with respect to x evaluated at x equals a times by the change in x. So. With this one, the change in x is going to be negative 0.01, and the change in x in the second one is going to be positive 0.01. All right, so let's go about solving this. So to start with, you can see from our formulas that we're going to need to know what the derivative of this function is. So hopefully all you guys know how to calculate a derivative. If not, I've got a, probably got a few videos on that, so you can just check back into the uh, Rolodex of videos. So the derivative of this one is going to be a quadratic. It's going to be 6x squared plus 6x minus 12, which can also be written as 6 bracket x squared plus 6x minus, oh, pfft. x squared minus x minus 2. Sorry, I went into a sort of autopilot then. Now, basically from here, we then have to say that the the change in y, so that's what we're trying to find, this change in y here, delta y is going to be sort of equal to or can be approximated best by the derivative of y with respect to x evaluated at the initial point. So in these cases, the initial points are 2. So we're going to evaluate our derivative at 2. So it's going to be x squared. So 2 squared is 4, plus 4, plus 2 is 6, minus 2 is back to 4, times 6, 4 times 6 is 24. So that's our derivative, or our gradient, at x equals 2. So this is for the first one. We'll put an i there. So that's our gradient at x equals 2. Then we have to multiply that for this one by the change in y, like we, oh sorry, the change in x, like we said over here. So the change in x is 
0 1 and that's going to be a negative 0 0.01 because it's going down now you doesn't you don't really need a calculator to figure this one out you just get, this is going to be just negative 0 0.24 now, for 2, we can say that, or for ii, however you, whatever you call it, the delta y, or the change in y, is going to be approximated. Now, the starting point where we're evaluating the gradient from is the same, so we, can, we don't have to really work that out again. We can just say that's equal to 24. The only difference in these two is this is going up by 0 0.01. So rather than going negative 0 0.01, we're going to go times by just 0 0.01, which is approximately equal to 0 0.24. So as you would expect, if you've got the if you're evaluating from the same x point and you're going in either direction by the same amount, you can be rest assured that the change in y is just going to be the opposite, but the absolute value of the change is going to be the same. So let's move on to b. Use your answer in a to estimate the value of y when x equals 1.99 and x equals 2.01. Okay, so basically what we can do here is we can say the value of y when x is 1.99 is going to be equal to the function, I'm going to use mixed notation here, the function at 2 plus, and I'm going to call, well, and this is just plus delta y. Now, in the first case, when x equals 1.99, let's just actually change this piece to make it easy to understand. So. The function at 1.99 is going to be equal to the function at 2 plus delta y. Now, that can be approximated to be the function at 2. The function at 2 will just, we can substitute 2 into the top one. 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16 plus 2 squared is 4 plus times 3 is 12. 16 plus 12 is 28. 28 minus 24 is going to be just 4. So the function at 2 is just 4. And we're plussing delta y. So delta y in the first instance is negative 0 0.24. So we minus 0 0.24. And that is approximately equal to 3.76. So from that, we can say the function at 1.99 is approximately equal to 3.76. And we'll do the next one. So the function at... 2.01 again is just going to be the equal to the function at 2 plus delta y which is we know the function at 2 is 4 and the delta y for the second one is positive 0 0.24 so we can say that's approximately 4.24 so the second answer to our problem is going to be the function at 2.01 is approximately equal to 4.24. So there are our two solutions. You can see the problem doesn't really have too much to it. Once you're identified, like, Small increments, the method of small increments is usually going to be, um, or the method of small change is going to be usually stated in the question that you're going to have to use that. And when you, when it's that's been stated, you know that these rules are going to come into play. So these are important when this when they tell us to use the method of small increments. 
What we do first is we work out what the derivative of the function is, and then we evaluate that derivative at our initial point. In this case, it was 2 and 2, so the same point. What we then do is we find the derivative at this point, or the slope of the function, and then we just multiply the slope of the function by the change in x, and that gives us the change in y. So I hope this video helped. Um, it's not a very complicated question. I've got a couple of other videos on this that you, which involve spheres and areas and volumes and surface areas. So if you'd like to have a look at them, be sure to you know flick back through the playlist. Um, again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Do me a favor. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know if you've got any problems that you'd like me to have a go at solving. I'm uh, always looking out for new ones. But until next time, I hope you have a good time. Catch you later.